Jen McNary has two sons, 15-year-old Austin and 12-year-old Max. Both have a form of muscular dystrophy that leads to muscle degeneration and eventually death. The boy's mom heard about an experimental drug that might cure the kids. She tried to get, tried to get them into the FDA-approved trial that was testing the drugs and was told Max could be in the study, but Austin could not. After just 16 weeks, Jen could see the drug was working. Max can walk. He can dance. He can swim. But Austin continues to get worse. Jen McNary joins us now, along with Darcy Olson of the Goldwater Institute, which is a think tank that argues that people who are dying should have the right to try any drug, even if it's not government approved. You heard the congressman. It's to protect you. John, this is about saving lives. And what the Goldwater Institute is working on is an initiative where the states can give anyone with a terminal illness the right to try an experimental drug before the FDA has approved it. So, you know, usually a, a manufacturer discovers a drug and it takes 10 to 15 years before it can get into, say, Jen's hands for her sons. We're saying once they have an awareness of that drug, access should be immediate. If she wants it, she should be able to get it. And this Right to Try Act has passed parts of legislatures in several states, but it didn't just breeze through as I would think it would. If you're dying, you ought to be able to try something. Well, it's actually moving pretty quickly in multiple states across the country. It pulls at 85%, and this is true on the left, on the right, men, women. This is a no-brainer for people, John. Everyone has someone in their family uh, or has a close friend who has suffered and died from something like can cancer or other terminal illnesses. People know that when their mortality hangs in the balance, they ought to have the right to try these potential life-saving drugs no question now you heard about this new drug and no idea if it would work and then you heard about the study and went to the doctors and they said your older son was too old or what happened so the study was started um, with 12 boys in the United States and Max qualified because he was still ambulatory um, Austin was already non ambulatory and of the 12 kids in the test 10 have shown marked improvement. So actually all of the boys at this point are stable. Um, the two that did go non-ambulatory um, have better lung function. So that's the new data that just came out. And all of the and, kids... and stable is a good thing because this has been two and a half years and, and this disease causes deterioration. So, so one thing that is certain about Duchenne is kids don't get better, they don't stay stable, they always get worse. And these children were chosen because they were all about to fall off a cliff. They were all about to stop walking. And they stopped falling off the cliff. Absolutely, absolutely. They all, they all stopped, they all stabilized. And the improvement in your younger son is, is miraculous. And it, it's, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. He was supposed to be in a wheelchair. He's 12 and a half. Um, he is now helping to take care of his older brother who is dying, who is getting worse, watching his brother get better. How do they deal with it? Is he angry? You know, Austin's 15 now. 15-year-olds in general are angry. 15-year-olds <laughs> who are being betrayed by their government are even angrier. And uh, he knows the drug works. He's seen it firsthand. He sees it every day, and he wants access. So, Darcy, how do you reconcile what Congressman Kucinich says with her experience? What are they thinking? What the FDA is doing here is an abomination. There was a new drug, you talk about Fast Track, that just came out called Griziva uh, for leukemia patients. When the FDA discovered it, they thought, this is a miracle drug. They said, we're going to fast track this so people can get it right away. That fast track took seven years. So from the time the trial started to the time it was actually able to get into patients' hands, 30,000 people died. There's an attitude in government that's just, we are... The bullies, we have to decide for you. You know, I'm not even sure sometimes that they think about this, and, and Jen could tell you about this. She's met face to face with the commissioner, and they're like, oh, you know, we're working on your problem. And you think, are you, are you a mother? Do you, I mean, have you it's had like anyone boxing sick in with your tar, family? Right? They, they don't argue, yeah, they... They don't appear to see that every day that goes by is a loss of function for these boys and kids are dying while they're waiting I can't count the number of boys we've lost and since the beginning of the trial Austin is now losing the ability to use his arms two and a half years of a fully completely safe and effective drug that met all its endpoints there isn't a single side effect so talk about you know the FDA protecting you there is nothing to protect you from with this drug there is no off-target effect not a single one 
Occasionally, the doctors will argue, well, we need it uh, to be sure if it works, a clear double-blind study. And if you can go off and take the drug, we won't be sure. Well, I mean, even double-blind studies are arguably immoral at this point. When, you, when you're talking about patients with a terminal illness, we know what will happen if they get a placebo. They will die. This is a very antiquated and immoral way of trying to test for efficacy in drugs, and it needs to stop. I would think the baseline assumption should be that we own our bodies. We should get to decide for ourselves. Government says, no, you may not. Why do Americans go along with that? Well, I'm not sure that they do, John. I think I think this issue is like the American debt. You know, 75% of the people say they want it solved, and Congress doesn't do anything year after year. I mean, the political system has a lot of problems, uh, and I don't think what politicians do necessarily reflects what the people want. Thank you, Darcy and Jen, for sharing your story. To keep this conversation going on Facebook or Twitter, we're using the hashtag government bullies. Please join the debate.